Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today I'll be sharing a full three-day hypertrophy program based on the full body split. This is going to be a low volume program set for beginner and intermediate athletes. I think the full body split is very effective and versatile and works really well for people starting out. Particularly if you're a beginner, you really don't need that much volume to progress and you're going to do great starting off with three days per week. I recommend that people try and aim for at least a twice per week frequency for each muscle group and if you're training three days per week, a full body split will allow this. I've set this program up in a way that will allow you to make both strength and hypertrophy gains. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. After that, we'll talk about the weekly setup or how to spread out your workouts across the week. Then we'll talk about the pros and cons of this three-day hypertrophy program using a full body split. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's three-day full body program. It's a low volume program designed for a beginner to intermediate athlete. We've got day one, day two, and day three. Here are the exercises and here are the sets and reps. Here are the total number of sets for each workout so you have an idea of workout length. And down here we have the total number of sets for each muscle group per week. And you'll see that this is a low volume program. Let's start off with day one. So we kick it off with incline bench press for the chest, three sets. And we're using a top set back off method here. So you'll warm up to one top heavy set of six to 10 reps and then do two back off sets with six to 10 reps as well, but with lighter weight, about 10% off the bar. The top set back off method is a nice way to get in a little bit of heavy training, but still accumulate some more volume with slightly lighter weight. And I think it's a technique that can work with a variety of experience levels. Going on, we have the squat for the quads, three sets, and we're also using a top set back off method here, one top heavy set of five to eight reps, and two back off sets of five to eight reps. Then we have leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15. If your goal is hypertrophy, you do wanna include some type of leg curl in your training program because one of the hamstring muscles, the biceps femoris, doesn't get optimally trained with usual hip hinge movements like deadlift variations. Then we have barbell rows for the back, four sets, and we're using a top set back off method here as well. One top heavy set of six to 10 reps followed by three back off sets of six to 10 reps with lighter weight. And you'll see that I've tried to even out my axial fatigue here. So with heavier variations of rows, squats, and deadlifts, you'll see that I've tried to spread this out across the week because these movements are disproportionately more fatiguing. If you lump them all together, you'd have a really tough day that wouldn't be as productive. Then we go into cable curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And while you're on the cable machine, you can superset these with cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. I really like using supersets to save time without sacrificing productivity. So I'd recommend trying to incorporate supersets whenever you can, as long as the exercises don't interfere with each other. Then we have cable lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of eight to 12. If you wanted to, you could actually run these three exercises as a giant set. That is do curls, press downs, and lateral raises, then rest and then come back. This could allow you to have a little bit more rest in between sets and thus keep up your performance better across them. You don't have to do this, but you could try it. Then we have standing calf raises for the calves, three sets of eight to 12. And I'd recommend doing these on one leg using a dumbbell for resistance. One side benefit of these standing calf raises is that you get a little bit of grip and isometric trap training from holding that dumbbell. As a more advanced athlete, you may not want the extra fatigue of this, but for beginners, I think it's great. Then we have day two, we start with barbell overhead press, and this predominantly trains the front delts, but also a little bit of upper pecs and triceps. Three sets, and we're using a top set back off method here as well, so one top heavy set of five to eight reps, and two back off sets of five to eight reps with about 10% lighter weight. Then we move on to deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets, and we're also using a top set back off method here, one top heavy set of five to eight reps, and one back off set. Notice that here I've put our main upper body movement before our main lower body movement. And this is because if you have a really tough lower body movement like squats or deadlifts, it could impede your performance on your main lift coming afterwards for the upper body. But an upper body movement isn't going to fatigue you as much for your lower body training. This is a relatively small point and may not make that much of a difference for a beginner, particularly if you're not lifting that much weight. So if you're just starting out and you prefer starting out with your biggest, toughest movement first, you could also start with your main lower body movement of the day. Then we have leg extensions for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. Leg extensions do give a bit of advantage in training the rectus femoris. So I do recommend including one of these in your program if your goal is hypertrophy. However, note that if you are less experienced, you really do want to be focusing more on compound movements. You really just want to be activating as much muscle mass as possible. Then we have leg press calf raises for the calves, three sets of eight to 12. For this program, I'd recommend taking your calf training to failure or at least very close to it. Most people aren't pushing their calf training hard enough and the calves do recover pretty quickly. 
Then we have weighted dips for the triceps and chest, three sets, and we're doing one top heavy set of six to 10 reps, followed by two back off sets. Obviously, if you're not able to add a weight to your dips yet, you can just do them unassisted or even use an assisted dips machine. You will hear me say that calisthenics are my favorite, but when you're able to add weight to them in a progressive way like this in weighted dips, then they become excellent movements for hypertrophy. Basically, you want to choose movements that allow you to overload in a precise way. That is, you can add in small increments of weight over time, and you can do this with weighted dips. You can even add just a 2.5 pound or a 5 pound plate to progress over time. With something like push-ups though, it's much harder to incrementally add weight in small amounts. And you'd have trouble getting a high overload ceiling with a lot of calisthenics movements, but with weighted dips, you really can add a lot of weight if you get strong enough. Then we have lat pull downs for the back, four sets of 10 to 15. After that, hammer curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. And finally, barbell upright rows for the side delts, but also the traps, four sets of eight to 12. For less advanced athletes, I do recommend using more free weight barbell type movements. I think these give you a lot of bang for your buck and fatigue won't be a big issue for you since you just aren't lifting as much weight. Going into day three, we start off with dumbbell bench press for the chest, three sets, and we're using a top set back off method. One top heavy set of five to eight reps, followed by two back off sets of five to eight reps. In this program, our dumbbell bench press is our main heavy chest movement but I have programmed incline bench press to be relatively strength focused as well. Notice that I've included both a barbell and dumbbell type movement for your chest. Dumbbells are nice because you get a little bit more range of motion and you're able to target each side independently. Then we have Romanian deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets, and we're using one top heavy set of six to 10 reps followed by a back off set of six to 10 reps with lighter weight. Note that I put RDLs after deadlifts because deadlifts are a higher priority and I want you to hit your deadlifts while your glutes and hamstrings are relatively fresh. RDLs, since they load your hamstrings heavily in a stretched state, tend to cause a lot of soreness. So if we had this the other way around and we had RDLs coming before deadlifts, you're more likely to have sore hamstrings going into deadlifts, which could impair your performance on your main deadlift movement. So you'll see that I've strategically ordered exercises across the program for the best performance overall. Next, we have hack squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12. If you don't have a hack squat machine, you can use Smith machine squats as well as a similar movement. Next, we have single arm dumbbell rows for the back, four sets of eight to 12. I really like single arm dumbbell rows because they allow you to get a bit more range of motion at the bottom of the movement. Then we have line curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. For these, you'll be lying flat on your back on a horizontal bench. Then we have dumbbell skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12, and you can superset these two dumbbell movements on a bench. Then we have cable lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 10 to 15. Note that it is okay to repeat exercises across the week, but I do switch up the rep ranges a little bit between days. Finally, we have some more standing calf raises for the calves, three sets of 10 to 15. Note that I've offset our toughest movements, squat and deadlift with relatively easier leg movements, such as the leg curl and leg extension. This helps even out fatigue a little bit. Also notice that I have slightly more horizontal pulling work here than I do vertical pulling. I think both are important for complete back development, but if you're training with low volumes and you're gonna have a bit of asymmetry, horizontal rows can work a little bit more musculature. Notice that I've used the top set back off method for exercises beyond our main heaviest movements. This shows you that you can use this method for accessories and I really want you to be trying to build strength in all of these major movements. As a beginner, you really wanna be focusing on getting stronger. At an early level, strength and hypertrophy training does go parallel in many ways. All right, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about our weekly setup. So my recommended setup is day one, rest, day two, rest, day three, rest, and rest. Full body is particularly simple for setting up across the week. Basically, you just wanna spread it out as evenly as possible making the most of your rest days. For this program, I particularly designed it for one, two, and three, and then two rest days. You'll see that I place exercises on day three that cause more of a stretch and are thus more likely to cause muscle soreness, like RDLs, line bicep curls, dumbbell bench presses, and skull crushers. So it's gonna be nice to have those two rest days after that day. But note that as long as you have a rest day in between days, you could shuffle these days around the week. Also note that I set this program up for three days per week, but you could potentially also run it in a one day on one day off fashion. That is, you could start the cycle again on Sunday here with another day one. If you are a beginner though, I'd recommend just starting with three days per week. You really don't need that much volume to progress. I'd rather you start off with less work rather than more so that you're really able to handle it in your schedule and with your recovery. How long have you been training for? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this three day full body hypertrophy program. 
Starting off with the pros, a full body split is highly customizable and that's one of my favorite aspects of it. Since you have many opportunities to train each muscle group, you can include every muscle group in every workout or you can add or subtract muscle groups from certain days. This allows you to very finely tune how much volume you allocate to each muscle. In this program, I spread out our muscle group training out pretty evenly, but you can see that it's very easy to tweak muscle group set volumes by just adding a set on each day. Like with our back and side delt training, we just have four sets per day rather than three. Or you can always just take away a muscle group from a certain day if you don't want to give it as much priority. Next, this three day full body setup is relatively flexible. As I mentioned, as long as you have a rest day in between each day, you can shuffle the workouts around across the week somewhat. If you want to get into higher frequencies with more days per week, you would need more auto regulation, especially when you start having days coming back to back. But for a beginner, starting off with three days per week, a full body split is going to work really well, and you're always going to be able to have decent recovery in between. Next, this three day full body setup works particularly well with strength programming. As you saw, I was nicely able to spread out our main heavy movements, particularly the squat, deadlift, and RDL. And if you wanted, you could increase the frequency of your main lifts. If you wanted to, it'd be very easy for you to program in the squat and deadlift up to three times per week and having deadlift or deadlift accessories each day as well. Having the ability to have higher exposure to these main lifts will allow you to build your technique and neural adaptations. If you had something like a bro split where you only had one leg day per week, you wouldn't have this opportunity. Note that my programs are designed to work well with some beginner strength programming in a plug and play fashion. So if there is, for example, a beginner powerlifting program that you wanted to combine with this, you could very easily substitute the leg training and the bench press training. Finally, this three day full body split has excellent fatigue distribution. That is, when you're training full body each day, you have an even distribution of the stress across each workout. This isn't the biggest player for beginners who just aren't able to generate that much fatigue from each workout, but as you become more advanced, fatigue distribution does become more important, and you really want to be able to make sure you get the most stimulus out of each workout. If, for example, you had a really tough leg day and a much easier arm day, all that fatigue you generate across that leg day means you may not be getting the most out of each set in that workout. If you can spread that leg training out a bit more across the week, you may be able to perform better overall. Okay, now let's talk about the disadvantages of this three-day full body hypertrophy program. First of all, full body splits tend to have relatively long workouts, and this is because you just have to train each muscle group in each workout, or at least close to. And since you have to spread your sets over all these different muscle groups, you usually have to be moving around the gym and switching up equipment. You'll see that I have tried to mitigate this by using supersets whenever possible. So when you do have exercises that don't interfere with each other, I'd recommend trying to superset them. I actually don't really find this to be that much of a problem though. I find that even with other splits, you usually end up having a similar number of exercises per day if you want to get to the same overall total weekly volumes. Next, with full body training, some people complain that they get less of a pump, and this is just because you're using less sets for each muscle group per workout. This can be an issue for beginners, but for people who are more advanced and you have better technique and really good mind-muscle connection, you're actually able to get a good pump with even just a few sets. For myself, I can get a really good pump in almost any muscle group after just about two sets. Finally, with full body training, some people feel that they're all over the place and they're not as focused. This is a personal preference thing. Depending on your psychology of training, some people just really like being able to go into the gym and just focus on a few muscle groups. I do think that a lot of this is a mindset shift though, and it is a product of what you're comfortable with and what you're used to. So if you've never tried full body training before, I would recommend giving a shot at some point. Now I will be sharing this full program as I've laid out in an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't found the group already, find the link in the description below. Join the group and you can download the program for free. If you want to see some other examples of low volume training programs well designed for beginners, check out this playlist where I share some of my best hypertrophy programs set with low volumes. For more top-notch free hypertrophy programs like this, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.